Today we're gonna make five cocktails inspired by New York City with these three bottles. That might be a little misleading that you only need these three bottles, but these are the three base spirits that you need to make five cocktails. So if you're not familiar with New York City, how it's worked, there's five boroughs of New York City, and that's just basically five different sections of New York. Mm -hmm. Do you know the five boroughs? No. Manhattan, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Queens, and Staten Island. So those little areas make up the entire area of New York City, or the whole city of New York City. So we're gonna start off with the Manhattan, one of the most classic cocktails out there. And it's always fun to see how other bartenders make it, what combination of rye and sweet vermouth they use. I like to personally use orange bitters, so we're gonna start off with one dash of Regan's orange bitters. We're gonna do one ounce of cokey vermouth. And then we're gonna do two ounces of rye whiskey. We really like Rittenhouse. It's affordable, 25 bucks, 100 proof, and it's a workhorse. We're gonna add ice and stir for 30 seconds. And then you're gonna strain into your favorite coupe or Nick or Nora glass. I don't even know what the hell to call this one. Then we're gonna garnish with Riley's favorite thing about drinking. Snacks. Snacks. Expensive snacks. So does this video's inspiration have anything to do with the fact that you have planned yourself a trip to New York in June? Mm, maybe. <laughs> maybe a little bit. A little bit. So yeah, in Brooklyn, uh, in June, there's Bar Convent. It's a conference for people in the industry. Like I had to submit pay stubs and stuff to go this. I've never been to one. I'm excited to go to this and I'm going by myself. <laughs> Let's get to the Manhattan. It's a classic for a reason. It's one of my favorite standards. Like a cocktail you must know. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to five cocktails in New York City. That you're gonna have, I'm gonna say. Ah. Mm. It's so good. Mm -hmm. With the Rittenhouse and that Cokie just yeah. adds a little bit of sweetness and bite to and, it. And vermouth really does matter in this cocktail just because it is so Dominant? Not, do, not dominant, no, I mean, right there, word. it's only three ingredients and one of them is bitters. <laughs> right. <laughs> the vermouth really does matter. It does, like, and it depends on what you like. Do you like spicy or do you like sweet or right. do you want to taste your rye more? And the, like, and that's what's great about this cocktail, like seeing what other bartenders, what combinations they use. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, oh, okay, I can get behind that, right. you know? And so like, I've actually seen bartenders uh, couple where they split their rye and the vermouth. So it just gives a more complexity and just a different aspect of what this mm -hmm. Manhattan drink. Next, we're gonna do the Bronx. It's a gin cocktail using dry and sweet vermouth and a little bit of orange juice. We're gonna start off with a quarter ounce of dry vermouth, a quarter ounce of sweet vermouth, one ounce of freshly squeezed orange juice, and then two ounces of gin. Add ice and shake for 12 to 15 seconds. And then we're gonna double strain into our fancy little Negroni glasses. We're gonna do a little orange peel garnish. I'm not a big orange juice fan in cocktails because usually orange juice is so sweet. If you have orange juice in your cocktails, you want it to be a split based like lemon or lime. Right, usually so, but again, this cocktail is very old and you know, it's been around for a while now. So and I think I think this cocktail also has like waves of popularity. Mm -hmm. So let's give it a try. And a little bit more gin. Yeah, I love these little glasses. I love them too. Oh, it smells nice. Again, I just went into drinking again and... <laughs> hmm. it smells nice. I, I don't know, like it's just... I think it needs a sweetener. <laughs> yeah. So there's this podcast called uh, Cocktail College. Uh, each podcast, they talk about a specific cocktail and like history and evolution, evolution. Ev evolution of it. And this is one episode that was actually very interesting. This is the first time I've actually heard it. Like there's no spine to this cocktail. Yeah. So there's nothing that, that is really holding it together. You just right. kind of get these different pieces in. And I need to find that recipe that he talks about where they kind of like kind of change it up to have this uh -huh. spine in it and stuff like that. And that makes sense. Like right. just missing something. Right. Sometimes when I when, with cocktails like this, I want like a caramel note, mm -hmm. something that's gonna like right. pack it in. Yeah. But I mean, that, in theory, that would be the spine of it, right? right? Like you're just you're just threading this thing throughout it that mm -hmm. just holds it all together. And I think if I remember, okay, if I remember the episode, they talked about like using like bitters or something like that. Just. But yeah, that would do it. I understand why it was so popular because again, you got to remember like what was drinks like 80 years ago, 100 right. years ago. So yeah, I mean, it's it's a good cocktail. I think. 
when we look at cocktails now and what we can do with being, we can make this a better cocktail, but still keep the essence of what the cocktail originally was. Right, keep it, keep the, uh, in the spirit of mm -hmm. the tradition. Get it? Spirit. 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 All right, next we're gonna do the Queen's cocktail. We're gonna start off with a half ounce of dry vermouth, half ounce of sweet vermouth, one ounce of freshly balked pineapple juice. We get the good stuff, fresh press. One and a half ounces of gin. Add ice and shake for 12 to 15 seconds. Double strain to your fanciest stemware. If you have fresh pineapple, a nice lovely garnish, we do not. I've never had this cocktail before. I haven't either, but I do enjoy gin. Gin, right, and it's kind of interesting with the split of uh, vermouth and the pineapple, so it should be interesting, I think. Yeah, I'm curious to see like how sweet it mm -hmm. is. Exactly. Because there's no added sugar, right? Nope, yeah. Mm. Oh wow, that smells. Mm-hmm. It smells so nice. I just went drinking. I didn't even smell, and I tell people to smell drinks for the first time, and I was like, right, let's go. It does smell nice. It's like the pineapple is the dominant smell, but you mm -hmm. can tell it's got like the other notes that sing the, through it. Right, the botanicals, you can tell there is some of that, you know, vermouth dryness in there. Oh, that's nice. I think it's pretty good. I don't know if I'd order this cocktail, yeah. but if somebody ordered it for me, I wouldn't be mad about it. I think, I don't think a London dry might be the best gin choice for this. I think maybe like a Plymouth, you know, or like something. Like an Old Tom. Old Tom or something like that. I think. Ooh, this would be really good with that Bar Hill Tomcat. I think, well, <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah, but I. <laughs> the vermouth, the dry vermouth specifically is rounding out edges. For sure, I get that. That I want a little bit more I want a little bit more of the punch I get on the nose mm -hmm. that I that I'm not getting here. And right. I think it's I think it's the pineapple that's being rounded out. Yeah, I agree. That being said, I'm still gonna drink it. Right. Next we're gonna do the Brooklyn. There are many different recipes that I've seen on the internet for this one. We're gonna go with the one we found on Andre's channel because it sounds delicious. So we're gonna start off with three dashes of orange bitters, a quarter ounce of Amaro Ramazzati quarter ounce of Luxardo Maraschino, one ounce of dry vermouth, and two ounces of rye whiskey. Add ice and stir for 30 seconds. Strain into your favorite stemware and garnish with a cherry and orange. This is another cocktail I've never had before, so. Cheers. cheers. <laughs> <laughs> smells nice. Damn, I did it again. <laughs> I, I, keep, I feel like I say smells nice to everything. Um, obviously that's the garnish, but mm -hmm. it smells sweet and a little bit herbal, a little bit cola-y. Yeah, but, definitely from the Ramazzotti. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I kind of like that. I kind of like it, yeah, it's good. It's I, let me rephrase, I like that a lot for something with Luxardo. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it's good. It's definitely, that rum is kind of just, is just a little sneaky devil throughout it, you know, a little bit. Mm -hmm. And like that dry vermouth, you can definitely know it's there, but if you have no idea what dry vermouth does to a cocktail, you have no idea what's it doing in this cup. Right, right, but it does, So it's like, this is, the dry vermouth, I feel like, is the backbone of mm. this, the spine of this right. drink, because it's all of the ingredients by themselves are big. And the dry vermouth is like, hey guys, we gotta keep it together. Right. <laughs> we just we just gotta get our shit right. We just gotta make this cocktail work. <laughs> it's the, uh, it's, it's, you have your five friends, it's the, the one that's always, bin. it's always the, the sensible one. Are we sure we wanna do this tonight? <laughs> right. Like, I like the party, but. Right. That's you. <laughs> That's the mom friend, yeah. yeah. Right. But yeah, I think this is really good. This would be like this would be one fun like trying like twenty different combinations of it and just seeing like not which is best, but what what does this do to this that you know? It's very punchy. Mm-hmm. And you use Rittenhouse. Mm-hmm. It makes the Rittenhouse rye less sweet. Yeah. And you get that that hard grain note mm -hmm. that you don't usually get when you drink Rittenhouse. Yep. And last but not least, one of my favorite drinks to make people for the bar. A New York Sour, three-fourths simple syrup, three-fourths lemon juice, 
two ounces of bourbon. Add ice and shake for 12 to 15 seconds. Strain over ice in a double rocks glass. We're gonna float about ounce to ounce and a half of a dry red wine. I like Merlot in this situation. Use the back of your bar spoon and just gently pour over. All right, you ready for the last one? I am. The New York Sour. Yes. So this one, I free poured one and a half ounces of red wine and this one I measured. So there is about half ounce to three fourths more in this one. It looks like four, but it's <laughs> probably not that much. And also I double strained one of these and didn't. I definitely think you should double strain this one because it just looks more beautiful with the with the red wine and stuff. It just looks a little bit more vibrant and professional. Right. So at home, do whatever you want, but just, yeah. So cheers. Cheers. To five New York City cocktails. Taste wine. Yeah, you kind of have to get through it a little bit. <laughs> I was making a joke about how much wine there is Ow. in it. <laughs> would you like a steak with that right, with your red wine? I actually would really enjoy yeah. a steak right now. Mm. Wine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but overall, I think it's a great cocktail. Yes. This is actually a cocktail that I try to get women to, to who say they like red wine, mm -hmm. and try to get them to drink it. Like, ah, whiskey, I'm like, yeah, but, I think the wine helps balance out that bourbon, mm -hmm. but you still get the bourbon, you still get the tartness from the lemon, and then that, you usually want to use a dry red to balance out the sweetness and the tartness. Mm -hmm. I kind of tell people at home, use whatever red wine you want, just don't use a Pinot Noir. Pinot Noir is usually too light, and doesn't hold up against all the other flavors. Right. I think a Shiraz, a Zinfandel, some good cabs, full mm -hmm. body cabs will work really well with this. I don't know, what do you think? I mean, I love it. I've, I've always loved this cocktail. Yeah. It's it's nice, it's easy to drink, but you're, the wine adds a level of complexity mm -hmm. to a standard whiskey sour. It's definitely a super simple cocktail that's just, I think, very elevated. And you shows know, shows you how one ingredient can completely change absolutely. the cocktail. Some people do use an egg white with this. That's obviously up to you. I like it with an egg white. I like it without an egg white. We just made it without this time, so. One of these days I'm gonna be able to taste the sour. Yeah. <laughs> so here we have five cocktails inspired by New York City. Yes. What do we, what are, what's your final thoughts on these? They're all, they're all very good. I agree. I think you also have to like, when we say this, especially with these two, right. the Queens and the Bronx, you have to remember the time that these were created right. and with ingredients. Are, because none of these are modern classics. No, by these, any are, <laughs> these are cocktails that have been around for like a hundred, uh, well, 80 plus years, let's just put it that way. Like these, these cocktails predate my grandma who was born in 1944, right? right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Knowing that, and knowing the access to ingredients that was available, these are great cocktails. Yep, and they're fun too, like just to make, you know, and it's, it's always exciting when like a city can have that much influence where you have so many different cocktails that are named after different parts of that same city. So like, it's it's kind of cool to see the inspiration and see what- Well, that, that can have that much influence and then still be relevant this right. many years later. Exactly. Because I mean, I'm sure there's cocktails named after other cities, but hmm. are they? So for Friday's video, we're going to break down one of these five and change the main spirit with three different versions. So stay tuned. So take a guess. Yep. Put a yep. comment of what you think, which one we should do uh, or which I'm one gonna, you think we're going to do. I'm going to give you a hint. It's not this one because I'm pretty sure we've already done that. So sneaky, <laughs> sneaky, sneaky fact is uh, Riley's first video that she made the cocktail was a New York sour. Was it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, no. Cause I go, oh, you're an asshole. I go, amateur bartender makes New York sour. So that was the first video that you- You were an asshole because that was the first time I had ever tried to float anything. Oh, it's, he's it's, a it's a fun video. I mean, I mean, it's two and a half years ago. It's it's fun. So we gotta get those views up on our other videos. Gotta drive traffic to it, right? So you're right. So I got four to choose from. <laughs> Cheers everyone, we'll see you Friday. Cheers.